So let's solve this second order IVP. Uh, but first, let's recall from an earlier video the Laplace transform of f prime of t. And we should recall that that was s times the Laplace transform of some function in time minus the function evaluated at zero. So let's use that because we don't know what the Laplace transform of y double prime is just yet. So let's see if we can find the Laplace transform of the second derivative on some function in time. Let's go back to the definition. We get the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times, so we plug in f double prime of t dt. So here we're going to let u equal e to the minus st du becomes a minus se to the minus st dt dv picks up the f double prime of t dt and of course v becomes the integral of f double prime or just f prime of t. So again we've written this uh, as a function times the derivative of another function so uh, from the product rule of course uh, I'll write this as uv minus the integral of v du so let me see u times v will give me f prime times e to the minus st evaluated from 0 to infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v du so let's see we have the v is f prime du is a minus s so let's put the f prime of t and du is that's right minus s e to the minus s t I'll just put the dt out here so let's clean this up a bit um, at the upper limit I get the derivative which of course is just another function um, times e to the minus infinity which again in order to converge uh, should go to zero so the uh, at, at, as time approaches infinity, e to the minus st must uh, go to zero. And so we'll get zero uh, minus this guy evaluated at the lower limit, which is at zero, minus f prime of zero. And then e to the zero, of course, is one. So we have a minus and a minus that becomes a plus. I can pull this s out of the integral. And I get s times the integral of, and I'll just put this in standard form e to the minus st times f prime of t dt well this is just the Laplace transform of f prime of t so we get a minus f prime of 0 plus s times the Laplace transform of f prime of t which we already know from uh, here we have the recall. Uh, so I can write it says a minus f prime of zero plus s. And let's just make a big bracket here. And then I have another s times the Laplace transform of the function minus the function evaluated at zero. Okay. So let's see this f double prime really just boils down to we get an s squared times the Laplace transform of our function and then we get a minus s times the function evaluated at zero minus the derivative of the function evaluated at zero. Alright so now uh, we can go and take the Laplace transform of this ODE. So if I take the Laplace transform on the left hand side well I just have the Laplace transform of y double prime which should be very similar to the f double prime so I'll write this as s squared times the Laplace transform. Instead of writing f of t, I'll just write y of x. Okay, because that's going to be the function uh, minus s 
this becomes y of 0 minus y prime evaluated at 0. So all of this is just the y double prime term. Okay, then we get plus 3 times y prime. Okay, and so we already know the Laplace transform of uh, y prime is going to give us plus 3 times, so let's see, we have an s times the Laplace transform of f, well, in this case, we can again write y of x, f of t, minus y of 0, and then plus 2 times the Laplace transform of y of x. And the Laplace transform of 0, again, if I plug in a 0 for the f of t, um, the inner row 0 is just 0. Okay. So we can clean this up a bit. Um, first, we can factor out a Laplace transform of y of x from all these common terms. Let's see what I'm left with. I have an f squared here. And here's the Laplace transform, but it'll be a 3s. Uh, and then here's a plus 2. And let's see what's left. All right, we have a minus s y of 0. And so y of 0 is 1, so that becomes a minus s minus y prime of 0. Well, that's just 0 from the initial condition. Uh, plus 3 times a minus y of 0 becomes a minus. 3 times 1 or just minus 3. And then when we factor the uh, plus prime from here, we just got the plus 2. So all this should just equal to 0. Okay? And so let's see. Here, if I divide, well, I'm going to transpose the negative s minus 3 to the other side and get s plus 3. And then I'll divide by the s squared plus 3s plus 2. That should leave me with the Laplace transform of y of x. Let's see. So I'll get s plus 3 all over s squared plus 3s plus 2. And if I factor the denominator, let's see. I get s plus 3 all over s plus 2, s plus 1. And I want to do a partial fraction decomposition, so let's go ahead and write this as some unknown constant a over s plus 2 plus some other constant b over s plus 1. So if I multiply, I guess, both sides of this guy by the s plus 2, s plus 1, let's see, I'll get s plus 3 is equal to a s plus 1 plus b s plus 2. And let's see if I distribute in the a and b. Let's see, I'll get an a s plus a b s or a plus b times s. And then I get a plus a and a plus 2b. Plus a plus 2b. All right. So let's see if I equate the two. Let's see, I have s plus 3 equals a plus bs plus the constant 3 should equal to the a plus 2b. So let's see, this says that the a plus b should equal to the coefficient of s on the left hand side, which is just a 1. And here, uh, so the 3 should equal to the a plus 2b. So a plus 2b should just equal to the 3. And let's see, when I solve this, I get that a is equal to negative 1, and b is equal to 2. Let me just double check my notes. Okay, great. So I get a is negative 1, b is equal to 2. So I really could write this as, so here's a, so I get a negative 1 over s plus 2 plus 2 over s plus 1. I'm going to squeeze in space. Okay. So now I have that the Laplace transform of my function is equal to a negative 1 over s plus 2 plus 2 over s plus 1. I'm ready to take the inverse Laplace transform. So I take the inverse of the Laplace transform of y of x. 
I should just bring out my function y of x. Then I take the inverse Laplace transform on the right hand side. Let's see, so I have the inverse Laplace transform of a negative 1 over s plus 2 plus the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s plus 1. And this, you know, you always have to sort of change this thing around to make it look like one of the forms that we had. So I'll write this as a negative 1 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a minus 2. And this becomes plus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a minus 1. So now I get that y of x is equal to, so this the, plot, the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus a minus 2 is just the exponential function. Um, so we have the e to the, in this case our alpha is negative 2, so I get a negative e to the minus 2x plus 2 times the inverse Laplace transform, which is the same form. So I get e to the negative x, e to the negative x.